Hey everyone, it's Pop Pop. This video is of a live reading I did of the book Follow the Drinking Gourd, written and illustrated by Jeanette Winter. You can find more information in the video description. Now, come along with me as we explore the stories in all of us. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is David Hines Sr. and I'm affectionately called Pop Pop by my grandkids, which used to make me feel a little old, frankly, but now I embrace it because I love my grandkids and I love um, them when they were young. Um, today, I'm going to read a story that I used to read to my kids long ago. And it's a story about uh, five slaves who are escaping from slavery. And they're going on the Underground Railroad and they're helped by, uh, uh, by an old sailor called Peg Leg Joe. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the story as much as, as I did and my children did when they were younger. So. I'm going to get started now. And it's called, it's called Follow the Drinking Gourd. And it's by Jeanette Winter. And just a bit of history on that. The, the slaves used to look to the stars back in the day. And um, the Big Dipper was called the Drinking Gourd. And the, the handle of the Big Dipper pointed to the North Star. And that's what they followed to get to, um, to find their way to, to the north and hopefully to freedom. So here we go. Follow the Drinking Gourd by Jeanette Winter. Long ago, before the Civil War, there was an old sailor called Peg Leg Joe who did what he could to free the slaves. Joe had a plan. He used hammer and nail and saw and worked for the master, the man who owned slaves on the cotton plantation. Joe had a plan. At night, when work was done, he'd teach the slaves a song that secretly told the way to freedom. Just follow the drinking gourd, it said. When the song was learned and sung all day, Peg Leg Joe would slip away to work for another master and teach the song again. One day, a slave called Molly saw her man James sold to another master. James would be taken away, their family torn apart. Only one more night together. Taking their little son Isaiah, old Hattie, and her grandson George, Molly and James set out for freedom that very night, following the stars of the drinking gourd. They ran all night through the fields till they crossed the stream to the woods. When the daylight came, they hid in the trees, watching, listening, for the master sounds set loose to find them. But the dogs lost the runaway's trail and, um, but the dogs lost the runaway scent at the stream and Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and young George were never found. They hid all day in the woods. At night, they walked again, singing Joe's song and looking for the sign to mark the trail. The river bank makes a very good road. The dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, take foot, traveling on. Follow the drinking gourd. Walking by night, sleeping by day, for weeks they traveled on. Sometimes berries to pick and corn to snatch. 
sometimes fish to catch, sometimes empty bellies to sleep on, sometimes no stars to guide the way. They never knew what lay ahead. There was danger from men who would send them back and danger from hungry beasts, but sometimes a kind deed was done. One day, as they hid in a thicket, a boy from a farm found them. And a bag of feed for the hogs in the woods, he brought bacon and cornbread to share. Singing low, they traveled on. The river ends between two hills, follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side, follow on and on they followed the trail to the river's end from the top of the hill they saw the new path another river beneath the stars to lead them to the freedom land the drinking gourd led them on the song was almost done when the great big river meets the little river follow the drinking gourd for the old man's are waiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. Then they climbed the last hill. Down below was Peg Leg Joe, waiting at the wide Ohio River to carry them across. Their spirits rose when they saw the old man, Molly and James and Isaiah. Old Hattie and George ran to the shore. Under a starry sky, Joe rode them across the wide Ohio River. He told them of hiding places where they would be safe. A path of houses stretched like a train on a secret track leading north to Canada. He called it the Underground Railroad. It carried riders to freedom. First safe house stood on the hill. The lamp was lit, which meant it was safe to come. Ragged and weary, they waited while Joe signaled the low with a hoot like an owl. Hoo, hoo. Then the door opened wide to welcome the Freedom Riders. They were rushed through the house to the barn, for the farmers knew there were slave catchers near. A trap door in the floor took them under the barn to hide till it was safe to move on. Then Peg Leg Joe went back to the river to meet others who were following the drinking water. With danger still near, too close for ease, the farmer sent the five travelers on. He drew a map that showed the way north. On the midnight road to the next safe house, just over two hills. This time, James called the signal, a hoop like an owl. Hoo, hoo. That opened the door to a Quaker farm. The travelers were led to a secret room hidden behind shelves. They rested here for many days and healed their rooms, soft beds, Full meals, new clothes, hot baths, washed away some fear and pain. Isaiah smiled. When they were strong, they traveled again from house to house on the underground trail, still following the drinking gourd north. Sometimes they traveled on foot, sometimes by car. The wagon they rode did the journeys in carried fruit to market, and the runaways to freedom. At last they came to the shores of Lake Erie. Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and young George, climbed aboard the steamship that would carry them across to Canada to freedom. Five more souls are safe, old Hattie cried. The sun shone bright, 
when they stepped on land, they had followed the drinking gourd. So that's one of my favorite stories. It's um, it's a uh, old tale. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you all know about the Underground Railroad, but it was fraught with danger. Many people know of Harriet Tubman, but there were others who who um, who who used the Underground Railroad, and both white people and black people help people help slaves along to freedom, sometimes in Canada, sometimes in the North where it, it was safe. But it was a very, very difficult time in our history, but it was also a, a great time for us because people worked together. Not a great time for us, but a great time for, for uh, people of color to work together and make their way to freedom. I'm encouraged because I see lots of family. I see lots of friends. I see lots of my children's friends from high school and middle school and college. And I'm so thankful that you all are here to, um, to help me through this as I try to share some of the stories that my children enjoyed when they were young. So I'm going to open it up for anyone, if you have questions, um, just put it in the chat and I'll see if I can answer them. Hi with guys. my wife, Ann. <laughs> Hi guys, it's great to see everyone. Everyone, uh, we love you all. You know, once you're part of the Heinz family, you're always part of the Heinz family. And so we're just grateful to have you on this um, venture with us and on this ride. And uh, we appreciate your support. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of history about um, the drinking gourd and how, how um, this book came about. It's interesting because the author is actually a, um, a white person um, who heard the story from, the, this story had been passed down from generation to generation about um, the sailor called Peg Leg Joe, who actually helped people along on the Underground Railroad. And the way he did it was to, um, as the book said, he helped people by traveling um, to different farms, gaining the, the slaves' confidence by teaching them the songs and also doing handyman work to gain the slave owner's confidence. So it was, it was, um, this is, we believe based on a true story, but it is definitely a, a story that resonates with the, the Underground Railroad um, being very popular back when. Okay, I see a, um, I see a couple questions. Is the drinking gourd an actual star? Can you see it still? Yes, you can. Actually, it, the the Big Dipper. Now, back in the day, there wasn't there weren't lights from the city, and the you could see the stars very well. And so, the the Big Dipper was pretty easy to spot if you knew what you were looking for. So they would, they would spot the Big Dipper or the drinking gourd and the handle pointed to the, to the North Star. And so the North Star was always visible in the night sky unless there were clouds. And, and so that's what they traveled. They would always travel towards the North Star to get the freedom. Very good question. Okay, and I see a story, a, a question from uh, Jax, my nephew. What did the slaves eat? So that was interesting too, because they, 
Um, they often had to eat off of the land. They ate berries, they ate roots. And again, that was part of the Underground Railroad where some people would, as the kid did in the story, who brought them food, some people would bring them food, some people would give them shelter along the way to show them which way they needed to go. So they often were hungry because they didn't have food, but they were able to forage and find food and they were also helped along by people who gave them food. Good, good question, Jax. Okay, so I see, I'm going to go through who I see. I see my grandson, Trey. I see my sister, Ann, and her family. I see my nephew, Justin, and his family. I see Tori, my daughter, Tori, and her family. Okay, there was one. Okay, I see my daughter, Shelby, who is helping with this. Um, I see my good friend from college, Martha. I see my good friend, a good friend of the family from my kids from high school uh, and college, Isaac. I see Paige who ran track and is a good friend of my, my daughter, Shelby. And I was also a good family friend. Um, Naomi, who ran track with Shelby in college. I see Lin Linsberg, my nephew, uh, married to my niece, Sean. So I, I, I can't see the picture, but I see the name. So I assume the whole family too. I see Alexander Ward, who Alexandra, I've been corrected by my son Kendall, who that's his girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm glad she could join us. I see Nia, another friend of Shelby's from college. I see, uh, so Casey is, is Phoebe's family. Casey wins. I can't see that picture, but I see the name. And that's a friend of our, their whole family is a friend of ours from high school. David Bertrand, who is a friend of, who is actually um, my, my daughter-in-law, who is really my daughter. And that's her father. You see David, great. Uh, I see Kim Hines, my sister-in-law, and my, um, my brother Derek's wife. And I assume their family is there. I can't see the pictures. Megan, Christina's best friend. Okay, my, my daughter-in-law's best friend. I see her. So we are very happy to have you all here. Thank you so much for the support. I'm going to read a few more questions. How long did the journey take? Very good question. So it could take anywhere from a, from a couple of weeks to it could take months because a lot of times they had to hide out 